Hello, I'm Jerry Brown from Music Makers in Stillwater, Minnesota, and I have with me today a couple of musical instruments that are tuned to a pentatonic scale, and so they're good for non-musicians, and they're great for making sound effects if you want to tell a story or uh, read a story and have some sound with it if you're uh, reading to kids or uh, if you want to do some guided imagery or something like that. So I have uh, a reverie harp and that's this oval shaped instrument uh, with the tree of life in it um, and that has the lowest strings in the middle And it just goes up the scale on this, you know, on each side, this way or this way. Or you can strum the whole thing. So you get a pleasant sound by playing this, no matter what notes you pluck. You can pluck two or five or three or however many you want, and it's just a lovely sound. But what I'm interested in today is showing you some sound effects, some special effects that you can get with the instrument. And I'll do it first here with the reverie harp and show you how this works. Now I'm gonna make sound effects by using my fingers, a little flat pick like this, and sometimes I'll use the handle of my tuning key that comes with it, the plastic handle. And I'll show you how those work. So, as an example, uh, if you're reading a story to kids, you might want to have a sound effect every time you turn the page. So, when it's time to turn the page, you go... And then you go to the next page and it's a very simple sound effect you could do it with a pick or with your thumb uh, the same sound uh, could be used for uh, some sort of a magic thing if there's a uh, the appearance the sudden appearance of a an angel for example it could could be ushered in by that sound uh, or it could be maybe a gust of wind that blows across that makes that sound or maybe snow or um, or it could be a rising balloon now of course you can do the same thing going down and, for example, uh, if, you're, if you're reading a story, or telling a story, and there's something that falls down, you could go downwards. It could be leaves falling down off a tree, or it could be uh, rainfall. Or a waterfall. Or falling snow or leaves um, or another th another idea is that you could you could strum around or strum with both fingers both hands and pretend to be dreaming or the, have the character dreaming so that's a way to to make use of the uh, strumming of all the strings. Uh, there are other ones where you just use some uh, individual strings, like for example, let's say we want to do a tick-tock on a uh, clock. We could damp the strings with, our, with a couple of fingers here and pluck
like that. Um, and if you want to uh, make the clock chime, I'm turn it around here. There we go. And then if you want to strike the hour, you might take your handle of the tuning wrench and Maybe you have uh, animals in your uh, story and you'd like to um, have a cat meow. Something like that, or little kittens. Um, you maybe have um, a story where uh, somebody gets uh, bumped in the head or something and you have to you have a boing sound. Or maybe a kite is going up in the air. If your character is uh, swinging on a swing, that's kind of the squeak that you hear on a lot of uh, swings. Um, if there's a, a, a slide, you're going down, sledding down a hill or something. Maybe you have a uh, doorbell. And a doorbell generally sounds a minor third, so you would do the C and the A strings. Who's there? And then maybe you open the door and the, the door is real creaky. So you slide your fingernail on the strings, on one of these fat strings, to get that sound. Or maybe you have a squeaky mouse. Your fingernail on one of the thin wound strings works well for that. Uh, if you have action like bicycling or boating or running or driving or swimming or something and you just want to get the idea that there's continuous motion, this sort of thing works well. Just use both hands and keep the sound going. Of course, you can uh, tap on the wood. If, for example, if you're trying to knock on a door. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of fun to imitate a train whistle. If you lay the uh, handle across three strings, uh, on this instrument, it would be straight across uh, a few inches from the tuning pins, and then pluck those first uh, three plain steel strings. And you can slide down uh, to get the effect of the train passing a crossing. Uh, there again, you, uh, you pluck them all at one time. Um, if you want to do more of the train, I think of the um, engine that could. 
the chant goes, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And that rhythm is what you're looking for. But you'd use the two fingers, uh, from one finger on each hand. And then you can add your train whistle. I did a, uh, a video before on uh, on fishing, and so uh, the way I cast the line with a fishing pole is to use three or f uh, three or four strings fingers to pluck individual strings and and go roll it off uh, in sequence but quickly or maybe go up like that it gives the idea that you're throwing something that could be throwing a ball too another thing uh, some people feel that a pentatonic scale is kind of limited, you can actually play the whole scale, the diatonic scale, if you mark certain spots on a couple strings. Like there's one here, the, the, the smallest um, wound string I've marked, and then the second plain string here. And if I start on C um, here, I can go C, D, E, and then hold the wrench on the mark on, on this one, and then go to the next string, and then hold. The so you can get the whole scale in Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Another thing I like to do is mark, I use a little magic marker and I, I put little uh, marks on the strings where I want to touch them. And if I <clears throat> use the point of one finger and, well let's start down here, and touch it right in the exact center between the tuning pin and this uh, bridge, the exact center and just barely touch it and pluck, I get an octave higher than, than the string is. And it's kind of a bell-like sound. You want to pull your finger away after it starts ringing. Otherwise, you tend, you know, you tend to deaden it if you hold it, hold your finger there. nice little bell sounds. So that's how you do that with the uh, reverie harp. <clears throat>